Hey, year tens, thanks for coming along. Did I do it? Uh, Jack, you're not. Zyna beat you. Oh, so close, Jack. So close. Uh, okay, so guys, last lesson GCSE bonding. I liked and commented. Oh. Right, let's crack on, guys. No, I'm, you don't get to see my, my lovely face uh, at the minute. Oh, uh, okay, so guys. Uh, last lesson. No, close that. Get rid of that. Um, so don't get to see my, my lovely face because I don't have my clip cam with me. Um, so it's just going to be, stare, well, just going to be sharing my screen. So today's lesson, guys, is alloys. There we go. And I think, oh no, my laptop's doing all kinds of crazy stuff with the cable. Uh-oh, uh-oh, it's kicked off my chat window. Let's move that over to there now. It's going to be doing this whole lesson, I've got a bad feeling. So we're finishing off, this is the end of, oh, there, hang on, this actually isn't the end of bonding, of course, because after metals, we've then got covalent to do. So this brings metals to a close. So today's lesson is alloys. Oh, Gayatri's in the house. I'll update the register, Gayatri, um, as soon as this lesson's finished. So four learning objectives today, guys. Define an alloy. So what is an alloy? What properties change? The size of atoms and disrupting layers, and then no high carbon and low carbon steel. I'm also going to say that you should probably know other alloys as well, and I'll mention a few of them in the lesson. Uh, but today's lesson's actually relatively short, which is nice. Um, okay, so first things first, uh, I'm just going to, oh, okay, go back to pencil. Okay, so we, we, so far we've been talking about metals and we've been talking about pure metals. We've, we've you know, the periodic table is full of metals and, um, you know, we, we pick up all these properties of metals, but what we don't talk about uh, very often uh, and especially not in kind of everyday life is we never really talk about the difference between a pure metal and an alloy. So pure metals, pure metals contain, contain only one type of metal atom, of metal atom. So the picture of a pure metal I'm gonna shrink my pen a bit, I think, is this. So let's do iron, because iron's a classic. Gotta love iron. Uh, fe. <laughs> so here's iron. Now, please note there are two pictures that we pick up for metals now, and, and this is problematic in terms of this. There are two pictures of metals. There is the this picture that you guys all recognize, the, the simple version. Yeah, I'm gonna make that a bit bigger. The simple version of metals, which we actually need for alloys, annoyingly. This is this is kind of the, the simplistic view. But now we also understand that there's a better version. This is kind of key stage three, really. And then you pick up key stage four, GCSE. This is key stage four is GCSE. So we now get, so I shouldn't have picked iron, really, should I? Uh, we now get this picture where the atoms become cations. I'm going to do iron 2 plus in this case. Should have left more of a gap. Yeah, a ca the giant lattice of cations surrounded by the sea of delocalized electrons. You've got to be able to draw this image. I haven't made it. I haven't left enough gaps, really. So electron, electron, electron. Each one gives two, so 12 in this case. I'll do those. Oh, no, I didn't want to do that. Okay, I've done it now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. How many have I got? I've got more than that, haven't I? So I've got now 11, 12. There we go. And we know that these electrons, and I can do a little tab over here, that dot there is an electron. Yeah. And these electrons are able to flow through the structure. Yeah. And it binds it together like glue. Yeah. These are all able to flow. This is why they can, can conduct electricity. Yeah. It's just nice to add on all of these. So, um, so we pick up this picture, giant lattice of cations, giant, oh, bleh, bleh, bullet point, giant lattice of cations, of cations surrounded by a sea of delocalized. And we've got this surrounded by C, you've got to be able to regurgitate, C of delocalized, and then keyword delocalized. So, D, oh, 
that's a bit too thick there. Just gonna shrink that down. Delocalized electrons. Delocalized electrons. So we pick up these things here, this picture, the GCSE, but this picture is still really handy. Now there's a reason for this, why this is this picture here is still handy because it, it actually offers us a slightly less cluttered image when we're talking about alloys. So what we now need to do, uh, now it is just stuck. Oh no. I've got a feeling that my screen is do uh -oh. uh Oh no, is it stuck? I, I I know that my uh that there's a cable problem me being in school. It's not a very good cable. Right. Um is this working now? Yeah, they're saying it's stuck. So let's quickly go. Oh dear. So let's quickly go. It is all that it can, can conduct This seems to be working okay for me. This seems to be working okay for me. Can someone just quickly confirm that this is okay now for them? No, it's just stuck. Oh no. Uh, just let me know that it's running okay now, guys. It should be. It seems to be okay my end, but you know it, there may be other, an issue somewhere else. Can you? Can someone contribute on the chat for me? That'd be great. Somebody else. The video lagging for everyone, or is it only? No, it's lagging for me too. Me too. Oh, now it's just stuck. Uh, no. Um, there's not really much I can do about that. Annoyingly, um, it's kind of frozen. It's lagging still. Um, well, okay. Um, I guess what I'll just do is it's at a very low frame rate. I see. Maybe I should just turn off my, I don't know. Well, it says that shift videos up for con the audio avatars. I will continue, it gets stuck. The sound is all right, but we can't see what you're writing. Oh no. Um, okay. Uh, I will try to move it as little as possible. Mm, okay. Alloy. So let me know if it's still not working. Alloy. A mixture, and by the way, please note, I'm changing my color there. Yeah, a mixture of metals. A mixture of metals. Henry's there. Um, I'll add you to the red, Henry. Um, so it's a mixture of metals. Now, there is a clause in here. That is the definition, a mixture of metals. I could put stroke non-metals. The problem is I don't like that. And this, is, this is where certain things come in a bit problematic because carbon behaves like a metal in the alloy of steel. Uh, but So we can just stick with the, the, the definition of a mixture of metals. And what I want to do is, is now draw a picture for it. So for example, so EG, EG. So we've got copper, Cu, copper. So pure copper would look like this. I'm just gonna draw the simple key stage three diagram because it's, it's handy to do this, yeah? All the atoms in the copper are the same. Just gonna stick with the key stage three picture because it's easy. Now, the reason why this is, in, so this is pure copper. Now, pure copper, what we learn here is key bullet points. So in metals, nota bene, nota bene. In metals, the atoms, the atoms form layers form layers, and those layers, and those layers can slide. Now we talked about this during our metal lesson. Yeah, we talked about this. 
Now, what happens when this becomes an alloy? So I'm going to take pure copper and we're going to add zinc. We're going to add zinc metal. So we're going to mix in two metals together. And what I'm going to make is brass. Now, brass is an alloy of copper and zinc. And we now get, so I'm going to add zinc metal. Now, notice it's not a chemical reaction. This is simply a mixing process. We're going to add zinc, and here's what now happens. Here's the copper, and uh, at this point, I need my periodic table. I'm really hoping it's working okay. I feel like it might be the fact that because the, there's quite a lot of teachers in at the minute all using the internet doing live lessons. So zinc is actually slightly smaller than copper on the table. So what now happens is we add in an atom of a different size. Now you don't need much, but what you notice is when you add in something of a different size like zinc, what happens is the layers get ruined. The layers, I should color code it really. The layers get disrupted. So what that means is we can pick up a bullet point. In nota bene, in alloys, in alloys, there are, there are atoms, there are atoms of different sizes, of different size metal atoms. So in this case, we had the larger copper and the smaller zinc. Now what that means, so we've just got atoms of different sizes. What that now means, bullet point number two, what that now means, this is bullet point number one, that the layers, layers can't slide as easily, as easily. I'm really hoping you can see this. Can someone please let me know on the chat if it's doing anything at all or if it's completely dead? If it's dead, I'll have to figure something out. So if we disrupt the layers, then we can, and this has an impact directly onto one property. Alloys are stronger. Alloys are stronger. Are stronger than pure metals. Pure metals. Pure metals, uh, it's just lagging, but it's not very bad. Okay. It's the internet at school. Unfortunately, that's all this is. Just the internet at school causing me trouble. So the alloys are stronger than pure metals. This is why we love them. It pauses, then shows a bunch of stuff you write. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, there's not, it sometimes it skips a bunch of writing. Ooh. I'm sorry, guys. I'm tempted to try running it off the data off my phone, but I think that would be a really bad idea. A, it'll chew through my data in no time. Um, I think I'd run out of data. I think. I might try it at some point. Anyway. So, is there anything else on my laptop using any data? I don't think so. I've got nothing else running. Okay, so this is why we like alloys. So, we pick up a property here. This is our second learning objective. What properties change? So, we can now define an alloy, and we've picked up the first property, strength. Yet, we know that the property of strength increases. The next property, which is really important, is corrosion resistance. So we know that iron rusts and all other metals corrode. And we need to protect against this. And of course, the, the great example here is stainless steel. So stainless steel, stainless, is called stainless because it doesn't corrode, it doesn't rust. 
Stainless steel is an alloy of three different elements. So we have iron that makes it steel. We've got stainless steel, a mixture, a mixture of dot, 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 iron, carbon. Now that makes it steel. Yeah, people often don't realize that the reason, the word steel actually means a mixture of iron and that there, the word steel is a mixture of iron and carbon. But the word stainless adds in a second one or a third in this case, which is chromium. We add in a very small amount of chromium and all of a sudden it stops rusting. It stops corroding. And so what we can say is the two properties, this prevents, not prevents, um, it resists corrosion. It doesn't stop it. It just slows it down. Surgical steel won't rust. Surgical steel has about 30% chromium and it, uh, it doesn't rust for like a thousand years, but it will rust eventually. It just, it makes it more corrosion resistant. Um, two properties. Let's, I'm, I'm going to say that this makes it, let's link that to stainless. Yeah. Chromium is what makes it stainless. So the key things, the two properties I need you to know, alloys, this is another note of Bene. Alloys, alloys are number one, stronger, top answer. Our survey said stronger and they are more corrosion resistant. They don't rust as well, uh, rust as quickly. You need to know those two. They come up a lot. It's partly because of the word corrosion. Edexcel loves the word corrosion because students don't know what it means. They, 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 they latch on to rusting something chronic and, and they forget the word, they forget the word corrosion. Uh, all metals corrode, but only one metal rusts and that's iron. Okay, so we can tick off the two changes. Now, there are other properties that change. We can add on a third one, but the problem is the third one you're not allowed to mention in your exam. <laughs> you will also change the color, but I don't want you to put this in your notes. Yeah, but I will talk about it though, because it's lovely. So just, it's nice to know some examples of alloys and some of the really famous ones. So the first thing I want to talk about is gold. We love gold. Oh, gold, gold, gold. Always believe in the sun. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Gold images. Everyone loves gold. Yeah, it's a beautiful metal, isn't it? I mean, it genuinely is gorgeous. There aren't many metals that have a true color. Um, copper is one, which is pink, by the way. And, um, but gold, of course, is yellow. It's a beautiful color. Wow, that's a 1,000 gram bar of gold. Wowza. Now, gold, super valuable. Everyone knows it, knows it well. Yeah, now gold, of course, is used in jewelry. We all know this. But the problem is gold itself is way, is, is, isn't strong enough to be used in jewelry. If you just, if you use pure gold in jewelry, it would break. Yeah, by the way, otherwise known as 24 carat. So pure gold, pure gold is 24 carat, 24K. I'll put Carrot. I think it's carrot like that, not like like not like carrot, like the like like the food. Yeah, is it is it carrot or carrot? I think it's carrot. Twenty four. I just carrots. Carrot. It's definitely carrot. Oh, it might be with a C. It might be with a C. Carrot. Oh, chart. Got carrot. No, it's spelled with a K. Some people spell this. That's a nightmare, isn't it? Yeah, anyway, so 24 carat is pure gold. Carat, yeah. So 
you would never make jewelry out of this. It would be, it would just break immediately. We do coat. No, it's okay. Fair enough. Thanks, Anna. We do coat stuff in pure gold. So if people say, oh, I've got this, it's 24 karat gold. It means it's been plated with pure gold because you couldn't make anything really out of pure gold. It'd be really silly. It would dent and bend really quick. And a, a, like a necklace would break almost immediately. So what we then do is we add in other metals. So we make alloys of it. So for example, 18 karat. We then go to 18 karat gold. So what that now means is you can actually work out the percentage, can't you? Because we've dropped by six. That's now 75% gold. AU is the symbol for gold. Plus, what are we adding? What do we add to the gold to change its carrots? Would anyone like to have a guess? I love the fact that it says other metals. <laughs> Look at that. That's brilliant. The question is, what other metal would you add? Well, it actually depends on what you want to do with the gold. Most of the time we add things like silver and copper. We add a mixture of all of other, of other types of metals. But we can do some really neat things. So number one is as soon as you do that, the strength of the gold now increases. Much stronger, way stronger. This guy here is much stronger much stronger, which is what we want, major reason. But we can also do some rather funky things with gold by adding more and more metals. So if we now get, and you guys all know this, rose gold. Wow, that's definitely not what I typed in. Rose gold. Now, rose gold is a genuine thing. The gold turns pink. It's kind of cool, really. Uh, the problem is they're just giving me the, there we go. The gold turns pink. So we've changed the color. Now, the, the re how they've done that is by adding in copper. So if I do rose gold, rose gold alloy, rose gold alloy images. There we go. You can actually get these rather nice charts. So if you wanted to turn pink, check out that. Isn't that pretty? So we've got yellow gold, 18 carat, and then we end up with rose gold. And what they've done is they've added in copper. I'm going to steal a picture of rose gold. I like that. I like rose gold. It's pretty. Pink, pink. Plating stuff. Plating a wheel in rose gold. That'd be a bit weird thing to do. Um, I'm just going to take that one. Copy, copy. So if you add in that 25 percent, if you now start adding in all of it in the form of copper. You change the color. So this one here, the rose gold here, 18 karat gold, rose gold, has got 25% copper. And all of a sudden the color changes, increase the strength and the color changes. You also get white gold, which you can see here. Now, if you want white gold, what you're now going to do is add in a different metal. So the white gold, you're adding in platinum or palladium, either one. Uh, I'll go for the 18 carat because it's easy in the percentage. White gold, so rose gold is copper. White gold would be 25% platinum, PT. Or they actually usually do palladium as well, a bit of a mix of PL and PT. I'm just going to check the, my symbols there. Platinum and, oh, PD for palladium. PD, palladium. There we go, PD. So these and these two metals, by the way, are even more even more expensive than gold. Hence, why white why white gold is more expensive than yellow gold. Platinum and palladium are higher in value than gold. But we can do all kinds of cool things. Now, I'm just doing this really. Do we have to know the specifics about gold? No, of course you don't, Julius. Not at all. You need to know this. You need to know this box. Learn that. Yeah. You also need to know. This, learn that, that they disrupt, the, diff, the atoms have different sizes, those, those size changes disrupt the layers and the layers can't slide as easily. Yeah, I'll add that in here, disrupt layers, disrupt layers, I'm gonna add that in there. So you need to know that one. Um, and then, I'd, uh, and then the rest of it, like you, you, you have to pick up. As I said, we need to do high carbon and low carbon steel. 
we covered the layer, the atoms now disrupting layers. We've talked about properties. Now we need to talk about high carbon and low carbon steel, and we're done. So now the reason why edXL specifically do this. So we need to do a little subheading of steel. Steel. Yeah, we love, which diagram do we have to draw in the key stage four exam? Right, so if you're drawing alloys, then you draw these ones. These are the alloy pictures, that's pure gold, and that's the alloy picture. Draw that one to explain alloys. If they want, if they ask you to draw metals on their own, then you're drawing that one. Does that make sense? There are two different exam questions. Lauren, I'm glad you asked. Yeah. This is diagram showing bonding. Draw a diagram to show the bonding in nickel, the bonding in copper. You draw this one. Yeah. But then if they ask you for an alloy, you draw this one. Yeah. Just simple. Right. Steel. So the first thing we need to do is we know that steel comes in a whole variety of types. We have pure iron, which is not steel, by the way. So pure iron, iron solid. Yeah. And it's strong, but it's very malleable. So I thought I'd show you this. It's actually really hard to find pure iron. Now, pure iron has a different name. It's sometimes called wrought iron. Wrought iron. Go figure. I know, it's an old name. And wrought iron is used to make gates because you can do cool, funky things with it because it's actually quite soft. Now, don't get me wrong. You can't bend it with your hands. Well, you kind of can, actually. Um, you can't bend it with your hands, but you can certainly make some really cool shapes out of it if you've got a strong enough machine. But then we go from wrought iron to steel. Now, steel, we add in carbon. Steel, so we go from pure iron, we now add, add carbon, and what we form is low carbon steel. And by the way, if you're wondering what percentage low carbon steel, it is about, give or take, one to two percent carbon. That there, is low carbon steel. Now, all of a sudden, you go from, if you were going to rank the strength of these, you know, if you were gonna compare, you know, this one is Iron Man. This is Iron Man. <laughs> uh, yeah, steel is like, um, steel is Thor. Yeah, Thor's much stronger than Iron Man. We know that, Iron Man just, has a suit of armor, yeah? Thor's much stronger than, than Iron Man. So it is way stronger, way, way, way stronger, yeah? And then, now at this point, what are you making? Because people often say to me, what, what are you making now with low carbon steel? You're basically making everything that's made out of iron, yeah? So this is, you're making chairs, let's have a look at, Let's, let's just do low carbon steel, low carbon steel. So we're making pipes, we're making chairs, we're making wires, we're making bridges, we're making buildings. Low carbon steel is used to make buildings, pylons, nuts and bolts. We're using it to basically make everything. It's much stronger, nice and cheap, but very strong. But sometimes, sometimes, now the thing is, you see, the reason why this, this is strong, but, but, we can still shape it. Still shape it. It's still malleable, by the way, okay, I'll put in the proper word, but still malleable, malleable. And malleable means shape it. We can shape this. Shape it. I can hit it with a hammer and change its shape. But sometimes, every now and again, we want something even stronger. We want something crazy, 
crazy, crazy strong. And what we then do is we add more carbon. So we take the iron and we now add more carbon. Add carbon and we now get high carbon steel. If you're wondering on the percentage, anywhere from 5% to 10%. It's not that high. It's about 5 to 8, I believe. 8% carbon. And at that point, we are now Thanos. Yeah, this is Thanos. This is incredibly hard. So don't get me wrong, Iron Man, and just to show you examples. So knives. This is the classic. This is the classic. We make knives out of high carbon steel. The reason being is we, we, we sharpen them to a very thin edge. The edge is incredibly thin. And what we don't want it to do is bend. We need this to be completely non-malleable. We need this to be rigid. We need this to be fixed. We need it to be proper strong, really hard. So the blade becomes completely non-mobile. The, the layers can no longer slide. So it becomes incredibly hard. But the problem is it will shatter. So knives we make out of high carbon steel. We also make train wheels out of high carbon steel. And this is a train wheel that's broken. When train wheels break, they don't bend, they shatter. Because the layers cannot slide, so it breaks like glass. But the thing is, if you wanna put a 50 ton train onto a wheel, you're gonna need something that's incredibly strong and something that definitely won't bend. And the only choice you've got is high carbon steel. So these are now, in, some of the hardest things, tanks, high carbon steel, yeah, but it loses a property. It is no longer not malleable. It now becomes brittle. They now, not malleable, I'm actually gonna shrink that. I'm actually put not malleable, but, red word, brittle. They'll smash like glass incredibly hard. I mean, guys, if you bend your knife, it'll just snap. Yeah, the, the knives don't bend. Well, the, the, the cooking knives, I'm talking about not cutlery knives. Cutlery knives tend to be low carbon steel. Uh, you can buy high carbon steel ones from, from Ikea, by the way, the ones that definitely don't bend. You probably have come across these, ones that you just can't bend at all, they're completely rigid. Um, and that brings us to the end. Hi, Mito. Mito, I finished off your, your unit two paper. I did it this morning in my free time. So it's done. Go and have a look. Guys, this brings us to the end of alloys. Um, high carbon, low carbon steel. We're done. So at that point, uh, I don't think there's any point in me ranting on about stuff. Uh, oh, just before you go. Uh, oh, really love, love some nice facts. Here's the thing. So people often think that you would want to make your building, you'd want to make your, oh, KL Towers? Oh my God, KL Towers, perfect. Uh, KL, it's not the KL Tower, because it's the, it's the Twin Towers, isn't it? KL Twin Towers. So people would often say, well, hang on a minute. What, we should make the buildings out of high carbon steel. Because if we make them out of high carbon steel, we'll be able to make the building taller because it's stronger, but that, you can't do. The reason being is these are made with low carbon steel. Low carbon steel. Now the reason why is because buildings are so tall that they flex in the wind. When the wind blows strongly, the buildings will actually flex and, and bend. They'll actually swing from side to side and what you don't want to have is a totally rigid building because if the wind was strong enough, the building would simply shatter. It would, the steel would crack and the building would collapse. You need a certain amount of flexibility. I don't know if you guys have ever, uh, ever experienced this bending of tall buildings. If you go up the, um, if you go up the KL Tower, you can actually experience it. it the, the, the KL Twin Towers, they flex in the wind. They have to be able to. 
Um, skyscraper um, flex. Let's try that. Images, videos, maybe, don't know, images. But they actually flex and bend with the wind. They have to. Um, and you can watch some amazing documentaries on this. They have to do some really clever things to prevent it from destroying the building if they flex, if the wind gets too high. Couldn't find the video. Ah, oh, meter. That's because I did it this morning, which means it'll be brand new on my channel and you won't have access yet to it. Let me, uh, let me find it for you. My content. Uh, my content. Uh, my channel. Videos. Um, mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Mm -mm. Mm. That's irritating. There. And enter. There you go, meter. It's there. Right, guys. Uh, it's nice to talk about these kind of things because you, you, you don't often get to do it. You don't need an awful lot of this lesson. I mean, you, you've seen the facts that you need to know for your, your GCSEs. Um, you need to know about your high carbon, low carbon steel. Don't compare them to Thanos and Thor. It's probably not a good idea. Um, but anyway, I will, I'm going to leave you be there, guys. And you guys can, uh, I'll post the, um, the metals homework on the classroom. Um, but I'm actually, it, today's Wednesday. We're halfway through the week. I'll give you the metals homework tomorrow. You guys can have uh, an evening off tonight. I hope you guys have a nice rest of your day. And I'll see you all soon.